now to presidential politics. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders joins us from Burlington. Good morning, Senator. This year, as we look back, you and Donald Trump are the big surprise political stories. You've suggested recently that your message about the economic inequality can appeal to the Trump voters. Explain how that happens. Look, many of Trump's supporters are, are working class people, uh, and they are angry. And they are angry because they're working longer hours for lower wages. They're angry because their jobs have left this country and gone to China or other low-wage countries. They're angry because they can't afford to send their kids to college or they can't retire with dignity. And I think what Trump has done uh, successfully, I would say, is take that anger, take that anxiety about terrorism, and say to a lot of people in this country, look, the reason for our problems is because of Mexicans. And, and, and he says, they're all criminals and rapists. We've got to hate Mexicans. Or he says about the Muslims, you know, they're all terrorists, and we've got to keep them out of this country. Those are, that's what we have to deal with to make America great. Meanwhile, interestingly enough, John, this is a guy who does not want to raise the minimum wage. In fact, he has said that he thinks wages in America are too high. But he does want to give hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the top three-tenths of 1%. So I think for his working class and middle class support, I think we can make the case that if we really want to address the issues that people are concerned about, why the middle class is disappearing, massive income and wealth inequality in this country, that we need policies that bring us together, that take on the greed of Wall Street, the greed of corporate America, and create a middle class that works for all of us rather than uh, an economy that works just for a few. But, Senator, essentially you're saying that uh, people should be concerned about what you're talking about, not what Donald Trump is talking about. Well, not really, John. I mean, everybody is concerned about the disappearing middle class, uh, the fact that we have 47 million people living in poverty, that we're the you know, only major country on earth that doesn't provide paid family and medical leave or guarantee health care to all people. People are very worried about how they're going to retire with dignity. And that's why I believe we need to expand Social Security benefits. Those are the issues that are on most working people's minds. And what I'm suggesting is that what Trump has done with some success is taken that anger, taken that, those fears, which are legitimate, and, and converted them to be into anger against uh, Mexicans, anger against Muslims. And in my view, uh, that is not the way we're going to address the major problems facing our country. The way we address them was we bring our people together. We demand that Congress passes legislation which creates millions of decent paying jobs, raises the minimum wage, pay equity for women, making college uh, affordable for all. Uh, and those are the ways, I think, that we improve lives for our people, not by dividing us up and having us hate Mexicans uh, or Muslims. Let me switch to the issue of Sandra Bland. The grand jury in Texas decided that no felony was committed by the sheriff's office or jailers in connection with her death. And you said afterward, quote, there's no doubt in my mind that she, like too many African Americans who die in police custody, would be alive today if she were a white woman. What did you mean? I saw that tape, John. I, I don't know if you did, but I, I saw the way the uh, police officer behaved toward her. Uh, it is my very strong inclination that if she was a white middle-class woman, uh, that would not have happened. But it's not just in Texas. I mean, what we have seen is far too many uh, people, uh, often African Americans, uh, armed, uh, getting uh, shot and killed uh, by police officers. We need, uh, in my view, very significant criminal justice reform. Uh, we need to make sure that lethal force, now being a cop is a very difficult job, and I was a mayor for eight years, I work with police officers, most of them do a really good job. But we need to be clear that lethal force, killing people, should be a last option, not a first option. But Senator, uh, I'm we sorry need to, make to, to interrupt, I apologize, but in this case there was no lethal uh, force used against her. You're not saying that, that her death was committed by the officers in this case, are you? No, no, of course not. But she was yanked out of that car, thrown to the ground, confronted by the police officer. She responded and she ended up in jail. And three days later, she was dead. The way she was yanked out of that car and the way she was treated by that police officer uh, is not something that I think uh, would have happened to the average middle class uh, white woman.
Right. Okay. Let's switch to, to politics here. I was talking to a Democratic strategist who said that, in you, looking at your campaign, uh, he said that you needed to attack Hillary Clinton at least as much as Senator Obama did in 2008. You said you won't do that. Is that going to be something that gets in your way and your ability to get the nomination if you don't attack in that way? I mean, do I have to wage horrible attacks against Hillary Clinton? No, I'm not going to do that. But what I will do is contrast our ideas and my record uh, with Hillary Clinton. Uh, that's what elections are about, and that's what people want to hear. I voted against the war in Iraq. Uh, Hillary Clinton voted for it. We have different views on foreign policy. I do not believe in a uh, situation in Syria, no-fly zone, which I think can get us into a real quagmire. I believe in a coalition led by Muslim troops on the ground with the support of the major powers on Earth. I do not want to see the United States getting involved in perpetual warfare in the Middle East. I helped lead the effort uh, when I was in the House uh, against the deregulation of Wall Street. I believe that Wall Street's greed mm -hmm. and illegal behavior has been a disaster right. for this country, not only back in 2008, but it remains. Uh -huh. You've got to break up these large right. financial institutions, reestablish Glass-Steagall. Those are differences of opinion oh. that need to be debated. All right, Senator Sanders, we're going to have to leave it there. We'll look forward to seeing you in the new year. Okay, thank you very much.